Hello all, so today I'm going to be doing a presentation on Greco-Buddhism. Just a little overview, this spanned from the 4th century BCE to about the 5th century CE, and it started with Alexander the Great's conquest through the Hindu Kush mountains and the Indian subcontinent. Uh, this was largely a byproduct of cultural interaction between Greeks and India and the surrounding areas, which had cultural, philosophical, and artistic influences on both societies. So to start out at the 4th century BCE through the 1st century uh, CE, Hellenistic Greece is expanding under the leadership of Alexander the Great, where he con conquers Bactria, the Achaemenid Empire, and the vast majority of Central Asia. And the Greeks then moved through Punjab, which is in northern India. Along the way, many Greek settlements popped up. And this is the area where the Mauryan Empire controlled much of the uh, Indian subcontinent. And most of this area was Buddhist. After Alex's death, the Greeks kept venturing into a predominantly Buddhist India. Uh, here we see a painting done by Charles Lebrun of this. Then the Mauryan Empire was in power and they sent Buddhist emissaries to Greek lands uh, under the direction of the Edicts of Ashoka, which were given by Emperor Ashoka. And this kind of spread the word and converted some parts of the Greek population to Buddhism. Uh, vice versa, the Greeks would send ambassadors to the courts of the Mauryan Empire, including in Bactria. And in 180 BCE, the Greco-Bactrians invaded and conquered parts of northern India where Buddhism flourished. So this is a photo of the Edicts of Ashoka and that pillar. Moving on, uh, the Kushan Empire was, uh, they, they conquered the Greco-Bactrians of northern India in the first century CE. And they used the Greek script, the Greek alphabet, as well as uh, Greek coins. And they adopted a Hellenistic style into many areas of literature and commerce. This was a direct result of about 100 years of cultural interactions with Greeks. So building on those cultural influences, um, we see that there are many of the cultural influences on Buddhism of Greek society and vice versa occurred through centuries of interaction. Now in northern India, the Greco-Bactrians uh, and Demetrius I, they built cities where these cities, they actually showed religious syncretism. And Menander inscribed his name on all coins in Greek lettering. He also incorporated Buddhist symbols on them. Um, it's also seen that Buddhist manuscripts written in Greek have been found all over Central Asia and India. Um, Greeks dedicated relics of the Buddha in some areas, and there was a sense of religious tolerance between Buddhists and Greeks. Um, Menander I is recognized as one of the main contributors, contributors to the symbiotic relationship. Um, here we see uh, Demetrius on a coin. He's wearing an elephant headdress. This honors his Indian conquests. Uh, philosophical influences. There was three main Greek philosophers that traveled east to uh, India with Alexander the Great. And the two most uh, significant ones were Pyrrho and Anosocritus. And within two years, Pyrrho comes back to Greece. He founds Pyrrhonism, which was a form of skepticism, resembles a lot of Buddhism in their goals. Uh, Buddhism tries to achieve nirvana, where Pyrrhonism tries to achieve uh, ataraxia. And on the other hand, we have Anoskritis, who was already a cynic, and he just kind of goes to India, and he interacts with the gymnosophists and just kind of solidifies his place as a uh, cynic. So some artistic influences, we have depictions of the Buddha, where before Greco-Buddhism, we see that all depictions of Buddha are aniconic. And this kind of transitions to a more anthropomorphic depiction of Buddha, where you see more of his human traits and whatnot once the uh, Greeks start to have a say in that. Uh, the Greeks had a more idealistic realism with their representation of Buddha, and this allowed for a larger audience. Um, here's a few standing sculptures of the Buddha some stone palettes um, from Bactria. And just another overview, uh, this, this period really signified a fusion between Hellenistic and Buddhist, Buddhist elements. Um, both cultures were really admirable, very benevolent towards each other. And most of the artwork during this time shared traits between Buddhist and Hellenistic style. So here are my references. Thank you all for listening. I appreciate it.